Good morning. Well, actually, I should say happy Christmas to all of you. It's good to be here again in St Mary's Patrick's Bourne with our Advent wreath on this most special of days, Christmas morning. You'll see that I'm no longer wearing purple vestments, I'm wearing white because we wear white or gold on Christmas Day. And we're going to light our fifth Advent candle, the one that symbolises Jesus himself, the child who was born in Bethlehem in a stable, born to bring peace, born to bring hope, born to bring joy and born to show us God's love for each and every one of us. Today is Christmas Day, in which we recall the hope we have in Christ. We have lit again the candles of hope, peace, love and joy. We speak of hope because God keeps his promises to us. We work for peace because Jesus is the Prince of Peace and he calls his children to work for peace in his name. We share joy because the Holy Spirit fills our hearts and minds with the presence of God. We show love because Jesus gave everything for us and led us to know the forgiveness of God. And now we light our last candle. to remember the birth of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, as the prophets promised so long ago. Jesus, you have come to us once again, and with the shepherds we are filled with wonder and amazement. Lord, you came as a tiny, fragile baby, yet we know that you are God and you are with us. May the flame of this candle Remind us that you are the light of the world and that if we follow you, we will never walk in darkness, but will have the true light of light. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen.
And so having lit our fifth candle on our Advent wreath and reminded ourselves that Jesus Christ, the light of the world, was born on this day, we pray the collect for today, Christmas Day. Lord Jesus Christ, your birth at Bethlehem draws us to kneel in wonder at heaven touching earth. Accept our heartfelt praise as we worship you, our Saviour and our eternal God. Our reading this morning is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth to Gal in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth, gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth among those whom he favours. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about the child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all that they had heard and seen as it had been told them. I'm going to share with you a short reflection actually written by a colleague of mine, Linda Davies. I wonder if you ever listen to the news and get discouraged, wondering what is happening in our world. After the year we've just had, it would be hard to say no to that question. In the midst of a global pandemic, with a declining economy and the uncertainty around Brexit, I wonder if we ever question God about those who are in charge of the nations. God, it seems, has a habit of working in the most unlikely of places and through the most unlikely of people. In our reading from Luke's Gospel, we notice the Emperor, Caesar Augustus, exercising his power and declaring that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. Yet in the midst of this display of power, this ability to command the movement of large groups of people at will, with all its accompanying noise and chaos. We are taken to the baby lying in a manger. We are reminded that amid the voices of power and the noise of life, God is quietly and gently and always present, working in the most unexpected places. There is something about taking the time to notice, recognising that in the ordinariness of our everyday lives, God is at work. Imagine the shepherds in the field that night, tending to their sheep, a night like any other, 
may be huddled round a fire for warmth. Then all of a sudden an angel appearing and instructing them to go to Bethlehem to see this thing that has taken place. How wonderful that they encountered God in their place of work, not in a synagogue or a temple, not in a place where spiritual things are meant to happen. And then having got their attention, God takes them to the back room or the, the stable area of an ordinary home. In a year where home has become the workplace for many of us, and not just the workplace, but also the school, the college, the university, the church, the place where we've been kept safe. I wonder if God is trying to get our attention in order to look where. In the familiar reading from Isaiah 9 on Christmas Day, a poetic account of a military victory is transformed by the understanding that victory is achieved, or at least marked, in the birth of a baby. For to us a child is born, we read. To us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The birth of a child in war is a poignant sign of hope. In the past, commentators suggested that Jesus was born during one of a very few periods of sustained peace in the world, or the known Roman world. However, it's not clear that the claim is sustainable for the famed Pax Romana, Roman peace, was only sustained by the threat of military violence. In our reading from Luke's Gospel, Emperor Augustus is portrayed as someone capable of ordering half a world away to move around to be registered. And this is repeated just three, three times in just three verses. But still today, there are people who have inordinate power over others half a world away. In our Gospel reading, though, the focus quickly moves from such powerful people from Caesar Augustus to Mary. Mary, an ordinary girl from an ordinary town. Mary, who we read, pondered all that happened on that first night, pondered those things in her heart. I'm going to read a poem called The First Christmas by Marion Swinger. It goes like this. It never snows at Christmas in that dry and dusty land. Instead of freezing blizzards, there are palms and drifting sands. And years ago, a stable and a most unusual star and three wise men who followed it by camel, not by car. While sleepy on the quiet hills, a shepherd gave a cry. He'd seen a crowd of angels in the silent starlit sky. In the stable, ox and ass stood very still and calm and gazed upon the baby, safe and snug in Mary's arms. And Joseph, lost in shadows, face lit by oil lamps glow, stood wondering that first Christmas, 2000 years ago. Our Christmas, different this year as it may be, is very different to that first Christmas day. But however we spend it, I pray that each of us will find some space to stop still and simply ponder, to ponder and wonder like Mary and indeed Joseph at the Christ child in the manger. Amen.
And so let us pray. As we gather in the name of Christ from wherever we are, we pray for the world he came to save. For the church, that it may be enabled in our generation to surrender anew to God's wisdom and bear the good news of God's love to a needy world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the world, which is already Christ's, that all its peoples may recognise their responsibility for its future and may be inspired by the message of Christmas to work together for the establishment of justice, freedom and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all in special need, the sick, the anxious, the lonely, the fearful and the bereaved. That the peace and light of the Christ child may bring hope and healing to all who sit in darkness. Lord, let your light shine. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend all whom we love or who have asked for our prayers to the unfailing mercy of our Heavenly Father and say together as Christ himself taught us, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. As we come to our, the end of our short service of reflection, I pray that you will have a blessed Christmas Day, however you celebrate it today. Loving God, we have remembered the birth of Jesus and shared in the song of the angels the gladness of shepherds and the worship of the wise men. In this troubled world, close the door of hate and open the door of love. Let kindness come with every gift and good desires with every greeting. May this Christmas make us happy to be your children knowing that we are loved and forgiven. And may the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the perseverance of the wise men, the obedience of Joseph and Mary, and the peace of the Christ child be yours this Christmas. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and those you love and for whom you pray this Christmas and always. Amen.